what do we all think, yeah, boys? I mean, what was his demeanour like in that moment? Oh, it was completely the antithesis of what he'd been 24 hours earlier when he had that 27-second press conference. It was quite bizarre. He was jumping around like a cat on a hot tin roof um, and seemed as though he was a million miles away. But last night, he was really stoic, focused, clear and concise in terms of his messaging. Uh, and I thought, given the performance they've submitted, he accounted for himself really well. How do you reckon? Yeah, so like then he's – I couldn't imagine going there and – you know, someone asking for your job, and you've sat in a lot of those press conferences. I actually think he's handled himself really well, Jason Demetrio. Like that, to be given the ultimatum, and we've all spoken about it, whether on three hundred and sixty, Triple M, or you know, or whatever platform, to give to be given eighty minutes to save your job. I thought was unfair in the beginning because you you don't lose your coaching ability in six weeks, you know. And then when I look at South's problems, I don't look at the coach, I look at the players. To me, when I look at it, no matter what messages you get as a as a player, it's actually all your effort that you put in that can change the result. I've never seen a player, and I'll say it again, I've never walked off a rugby league field with any of my teammates any time I played from under eight till I was 30, said, how good was that game plan? <laughs> Mate, we executed <laughs> that a million. Oh, that set po- It's not. It's a bad effort. You go... Mate, what about the chase by such and such? What about this? What about that? And it's all the stuff that you don't read on your game plan through the week. And that's where South Sydney got better at last night. They got they got better at competing for each other. Uh, their fullback looked good. They looked like that they, you know, wanted to get down and dirty. Even though that like uh, they weren't good enough, but I thought it was good signs. James Graham, did you see that effort improvement last night that you haven't seen in recent weeks? And do you think South Sydney have made the right decision at the moment? In, in as hoops, there's a state of execution, and we uh, we we remember what it was like for Newcastle, mm. and and Adam O'Brien, he he his papers were marked, and then they went on that run that was quite unbelievable. That he gets a an extension. Did you see an improvement? They, they looked like they cared yesterday, uh, and I think that's half the battle. Sometimes it is is showcasing that you actually care about what's going on, and you you could make a a, a case for the fact that you know. That they, especially against the Warriors, that they, they were really poor, um, and everyone says you know, that that can be quite offensive to to say to a, a footballer like you you don't look like you care because they more than likely do, but sometimes it can come across like you don't, and yeah. they did they showed as if they cared yesterday. In, in terms of the situation at South Sydney, you know you you alluded to um, Newcastle last year. South Sydney are a much bigger club and dominate headlines. They've got celebrity owners. They've um, been one of the, you know, a foundation club out of the competition. So much history there that they're going to attract the attention. And, you know, Jason Dimitriou is a smart enough man to know that if results don't go his way, his job is going to be spoken about. They didn't make the eight last year. They came into this season full of pressure. They must make the eight. And I, it's difficult because... Souths have to go and look at alternative options. They have to. It, they, what they can't do is, you know, make a decision on a coach that means moving him on if they if they go down this path and not know what the contingency plan is. They, they as harsh as that is, and as you know, it could be viewed as being disrespectful. But as an organization, you kind of have to. And Newcastle did it last year, where. You know, we have it on good authority that um, head coaches that are out of work went and interviewed for the Newcastle job for this season. They interviewed. Yeah. And that's just part of it. You have to. And when you've got um, a job that exists and there's only 17 roles and there's maybe 25 people that want those 17 roles, you're going to get people campaigning and people putting their hand up. Or you're going to get the the leaders of the organization go and approach people that maybe are in, uh, in and around that that 20, you know, the seven or eight coaches that aren't in a job that go, I wonder if that person will do it. it it's it's only them, South Sydney, doing their due diligence. And I f- you feel for Jason Dimitri, I, I've, I've played against him, and he's right. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't the star player. He wasn't the Benji Marshall. That, that gets this track into a coaching job. 
He had to work his back. He played for Wakefield in the Super League. And th- there's something about that, that that type of person, like like your Bellamy's of the world, was, wasn't a, a superstar player. No. So Jason Dimitri has worked, uh, dedicated and sacrificed so much of his life in order to get this position. But it's kind of that, th- this is what comes with the territory. To your point, Jimmy, about the, the management... Uh, needed to do their due diligence. I agree, but I also think that they've dropped the ball and blundered badly in that. So they started having the conversations last week. Then when the story was made public, they all tried to deny it. The chairman comes out with some fluffy cupcakey yeah. quotes, um, uh, which are what they are. Um, and then now because of that performance last night, they've been backed into this corner where if they did decide to go through with the plan. And if they did terminate JD after that performance last night, it's a little bit like shooting Bambi. Like it wouldn't have gone down well, given what they had said publicly, the chairman comes out and says, the proof will be in the pudding. We need to see effort. We need to see commitment. But I think. And you saw all that. 100% Gordy. So if they then go ahead with the plan and try and parachute Mal Meninga in and they make way and part ways with JD, I think it would have been a really poor look. Is that legitimately going to happen? I mean, Mal last night on Fox, I, I understand on a rival set, he, he, he said he, he was he was coming out and he was backpedaling um, that, oh, I haven't been approached. Yes, I'd be interested. It's a hard clearly, position for Mal Meninga he has, to be in there. He's absolutely been approached through somebody r- around the club. Do you but, reckon that? A hundred percent. No, he definitely was approached. So a third party uh, who is heavily involved with the Bunnies uh, has been in regular dialogue with Mal. Uh, Mal, obviously, as he has spoken publicly about, did indicate that he would have an interest in the job. But I think that's that issue has been torpedoed now because... JD survived, yeah. and I don't think but that Mal, now. I don't well, think Mal, they, Mal won't want to play. Mal won't want to play the bridesmaid. He won't want to sit back and go, oh, "Okay, I'll hang on. I'll just wait for you guys to actually yeah. make a de- decision." And that gets me back to the initial point about the management, Jimmy. I, I think their management is symptomatic of the club at the moment, where they're everyone's dysfunctional. No mm. one's on the same page. So, uh, you know, you got the ownership group: Russell Crowe, James Packer, Mike Cannon, Brooks. I think. A number of the big names in management. Pappas is the chairman. I don't think he gets on with Crow. Um, I don't think that other senior figures at the club have the best relationship with Russell either. He's over in Istanbul or Egypt or wherever he is filming mm. his latest uh, flick at the moment. So I, I think, think he's in Budapest. Oh, there you go. Yeah. What's the film, Gordon? Do we know? <laughs> Hey, I'm the actor. What about the I'm leaks? the only actor hey, talk what about. about the leaks? Hey, hold on, mate. I got offered a role. Yeah, what you, about, can yeah, I ask you? Yes. Can you I didn't take it? No. Oh, I'm geez. not that desperate. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. Man. Can I ask you guys about the leaks coming out of the club? That, 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 that to me, but is it, the concern. It, but if, if he... No, if Jason that's the good Dimitri, part. No, 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 no. The good part was the players have knocked it on the head. Mm. Was it saying that that's not right or whatever? So I reckon the only way to get out of it is a really good... Honest uh, conversation with all the players. Yeah. Sit down, have it out, and then and then if I'm above, if I'm one of those guys, the chairman or the CEO, I'd I'd go to all the players. I'd go to the players that count from the youngest guy in the squad, and I'd go have a chat with them one on one. So it goes nowhere. What do we need to do to change? But well, you, you you are right, Gordon. That that's the conversation There's that should be, be happening. Adult but, conversations. You know, it, it, it's the it's the pub talk, isn't it? JD's under pressure. Oh, Wayne Bennett's off contract next season. He wants to coach. Oh. Well, they oh, but oh. who? If Mal Meninga put his hand up. Sack, I'll do it. Well, it's, if they go, well, if they sack him now, who's going to come on the intern? Or maybe Benny Hornby. Actually, you know what? Mallard get a response. It, it, it's a conversation that is had around the happened, cafe. Gemma. It happened. All yeah, of what I, you I say know. is factually correct. Well, what what's wrong with that? Well, mate, it doesn't do anything for the team culture when you've got a coach who's in there who's working, as he said, his backside yeah, off to I, try I and know. get it right. So but, but why? The, but in terms of the power brokers, and, and, and I agree, maybe they're not aligned, but they're in a in a situation at the moment where they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. What, what's the... What's going to cause the least amount of pain? Not having these conversations or having these conversations. They still lost. I, I know. I know they still lost. And I think you know. Again, you know, you don't need to be Nostradamus to look at it and go. Twenty-one days, they, Ben. They've got the bye. Then they play the Storm and Penrith, and then them. So two very difficult tasks. Dreadful red uh, record against the Storm, and obviously Penrith, the three-time champions. And then after that, 
they've got a winnable month of football. So, but if you, they're one and seven, if they, yeah, I know. But if they, if they're one and seven, but if you see improvement. But then they play. Well, that's it. I saw effort last night. Mm. I don't know if I'd say I saw improvement, but I saw commitment. I saw grit. I saw they were playing for the jumper. They were playing for each other. Well, Mm. that's what we're lacking. We all went to Newcastle last year, and you know, like, and we, you like, you wanted to see South Sydney go there and dominate, and they didn't, right? And they had a chance. I think that's when their season was on the line, you Mm. know. But maybe with the young fullback playing Latrell back in the centres, see, they've made some poor decisions, in my opinion. They bought Luttrell as a premiership winning tackle buster, Greg Inglis style center that had eight carries a game and would score three tries and kick a 40 meter field goal to win them games, you know, and mm. then they got him to be an effort player. You don't have. Wayne turned him into a fullback. That was under Wayne's too legit. That's Wayne right. But he's not. Fullback. Yeah. But I agree he's not. With and you. then, and then to go tell, actually, Luttrell, you are but not in the NRL, not the way Joey Manu played the other night, not the way Tedesco plays, not the way Reese Walsh plays, not the way the Dylan Edwards plays at the moment. As a centre, who's the best centre in the world? Tell me. Well, it depends. Joey Manu, he could be, he could be classified as a best Stephen centre. Stephen Crichton. Stephen Crichton, and then you put Latrell there, would they like to take him on? Who's the best fullback in the world? Yeah. I know that Latrell's in the conversation, mate. Mm. If he's in the centres, who's the best centre yeah. in the world? You say Latrell Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. Mate, I'm telling you, mate, when he plays Origin and he manhandles and he gets there and he's got the energy and he's on the edge, it's freakish, right? Get him to go run. Mate, it's like a sprint. Like, it's like Winks. They don't run marathons, mate. They don't go run the Melbourne Cup. Keep him in his lane. But again, like, having that conversation, Gordy. It might be hard. Like, it, it, it's going to be difficult and it could go, it could go your way where he's dominating. It could go the other way, What's where, that? where where he just he, he he feels like he should be a fullback, like the the you know you look at the there's low some ma- players that get the money. See, so yeah. the only reason why everybody goes on the market and wants to be a fullback because that's the highest paid player, right? So that's and all that everybody most, wants to be, and, and the most important, and the most important, right? But Latrell's going to get that money because it's yeah. Latrell. He's, he's, well, he's, he's already got that. Joey money. Manu's going to get yeah. fullback money because of who he is, but there's not too many others that can get. That money, right? <clears throat> so Latrell's, I think Latrell would be the best center in the game, and I think Crichton and those guys would have their work cut out marking him one on one. Well, he's back for that winnable month of football. Yeah, he's got another two games to go, so yeah. he's out for Melbourne and Penrith, and then he's back. Tell me this: you're so like then you're the recent retired player. You're playing against South Latrell's at fullback, or, or Latrell's in the centres. Hmm. <laughs> I prefer him in the centres because I don't get out there that much. <laughs> <laughs> Were they done it, boys? Um, 22 points to 20. Do you think that was a penalty? Which one? The, the one at the end of the game. Oh, there should have been a penalty, absolutely. When they were slowing them down, when... It was like, a professional foul there. You well, know. well, well it, you've got to have a lot of kahunas as a referee mm. with the game on the line to give it, and you watch every team do it like every team does it. But as soon as you start penalising it, they may stop doing it. They may, but like you're always going to roll the dice. You're under the pump. You know, you could see the way Trent Robinson was carrying on in the dress. Um, you know, how much that game meant to the Roosters after their performance last week that uh, they were really up for it. Mate, what's wrong with you, Dumbo? <laughs> Mate, what's wrong with you? He's rattled. He's rattled by the spicy rice. He he it. Okay, he see, so we got this rice, and it is quite warm, and I like my food hot. Well, so. It's too hot. I think so no. there's been a stitch up he here. No, no, my chicken has poisoned my nose. No, because I've got a new BS. I went downstairs to that little vending machine, right? It says Coke Zeros and Diet Coke. It says two bucks. So I've tapped the card. It's charged me $2.20. So I don't know who do, who runs that. Is that you, Chicka White? Is that your vending me? Because you make you robbed me twenty cents. Ah, that's Chicka's commission. Can I just See, ask you? Mate, so what about that? It's false advertising, isn't it? I, I do want to get back on track here. It's but thieving. Just, is this a stitch up? I I understand. Like no, we all no, have it's the spice. always no, spicy. No, is it normally this hot, often or is Chicka get, just designed no, 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 to give no, it a bit no, of extra? No, no, that's mate, it. We often you get, have you have you can, you can tell by the size. I reckon he's got your personal chef when you go home. I don't have a personal chef, you idiot. Mate, I'll show them in a chili and more. I don't want to. I want to try, but my lips are starting to swell, and and oh. I can tell you that's not the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to be able to play hurt, Ben? Or well, I've always been a tough, tough player okay. my whole life okay. for the Condamine Cods. Uh, anyway, can we just get back on track here? Brandon Smith 
Uh, Do you go for a massage this week? No. On the car. Oh, what was what was his name again? <laughs> Sven. 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 No. From the flying oh, see, tigress so, so, in Ipswich. So, yeah, well, we forgot about your personal masseuse too. No. Twice a week or something? No. Nah. Just Did, a once a week, isn't it, with no. the hot oil? <laughs> I'm not I'm not going down that road today. Why I have not? a calf injury. I've gone now and seen an You've acupuncture. I've, I've seen oh, an acupuncture. Oh, Sonia, you're getting it needled now. Sonia, Sonia does the acupuncture for me. Yep, she's very good. Um, a side note, you know, acupuncturist, her hobby, she plays the bagpipes for the Ipswich City Pipe Band. Yeah, so just a side note. Shout out to Sonia. Yeah. Uh, that does she play at the dog show? <laughs> <laughs> He's lost at the big Can we please get back on track? Is that a euphemism? Play the bagpipes. Be careful. I'm serious. I'm just asking a question. Are you talking careful. Be careful. I'm serious, Ginger. Do not cross the line. One dog, one bone in my life. Thank you very much. Can we talk about Brandon Smith? I think it was his best game for the Tricolors. I thought he stepped up, and this year has been outstanding for him. He's been a like it just looked like last year off the back of injury, trying to find that rooster's way. I know Gordon hates that kind of chat, but what every is it? Well, week. No, 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 no. If well, they've got style. They're style of football. They're style of football. They have no, a different so what style is the of Melbourne. Way? Well, it's a style. What's the way? Tell me it, what the way is. They have a different style of football to Melbourne. You accept that. The roosters have a different strategy to the way Melbourne play. And Brandon it's called Smith, a game plan. Yeah. So... I think this year has been his, his best season compared to last year. I thought it's his best game of the season so far. It was, a, and he needed to. It was a big, big victory for the Roosters. Um, they, you know, a lot of injuries, a lot of big players missing. Um, awful first half performance um, against the Bulldogs last week. That they, they needed their their big players to step up, and yeah. with Brandon Smith and that left hand side attack was. Was 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 really good and like they were they made to work for it like really I think Newcastle should have had a an opportunity to to kick the two and and send the the game into into golden point it was it was a top quality game of football talk about the the swings in momentum like the both teams started very well and then New Caelan Pong is just when he clicks into gear. He was he was running the Roosters um right edge like he was all over them. Like they didn't have an answer. He was turning blokes inside, outside. They had absolutely no no clue what he was going to do. Joey well, Manu well, girl, can I just ask Jimmy, were the Roosters the better side though? Well mm. I know we're talking about this contentious penalty at the end that I think they were. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I thought I think the they... Roosters over the course of the eighty minutes. Yes. Over, yes. Overall, yes, yeah. There was patches where Newcastle were very hot. Yeah, they were on top early. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say, I'd, I'd, I think if you were judging, you know, if you were giving your two points to which team performed the best, I'd say Roosters, yeah. Yeah. Joey Manu, a fullback. Outstanding. Okay, so what happens there? Oh. I know, I know. But, like, it, you know, it's created a headache for Trent because well, 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 he'll no, no, put no, him straight no. back in the centre. Well, he's not, not, he's not, can only play one position. Yeah, the, Joey Manu's not done anything that we don't know. And Trent Robinson doesn't know he's capable. Of. He's done it for New Zealand. He's do, he does it yeah, over he does state it of origin. So it's not like this is like he's, you know, cannoned from nowhere to be this gun fullback. We already know that. You just wish that he was playing at another club so he could play it every week so we could get yeah. to watch that performance every week. That's anything other that clubs must defense. be tempted when well, when they see the performance from him Thursday night. Other clubs and he's signed to go and play. What is it? Japanese rugby or where's yep. he off to? Yeah. For how long? I think it's two years. Or, might, or is it two years? Or it's it's top, one might season. just be a little one year cameo. A sabbatical. Yeah, just to go and collect and then and then hopefully come back. But the other other NRL clubs must look at the way that he can play in the number one jumper and go. Is that out. because he wants to play fullback and he's sick of it? You think? I'm going to go away. When I come back, Teddy will be retired. You give me the one mm. jersey, and I'll come back to you. Otherwise, is I'm there going a guarantee that he has to, that he is definitely coming back to the Roosters? Is that is that is that the there's reason? Not, I don't know that there's a guarantee, but there certainly seems to be an undertaking at the club that he will yeah. return. You, you you could make a a very strong case that a, another NRL club would look to make him the highest paid player in the game. Well, I think so, Shane Flanagan did, didn't he? Didn't it, he, it, he, he went after him heavily at St. George Illawarra when well, he signed. Like he was one, one of his... One, four, one, five. Well, I don't know. It mightn't have been that much, but it would have, it would have been one, two, mm. certainly. 
either way. Well, what, what would Ponga be on? He's on close to one five. Yeah, well, I think if you're looking at if the, if that's the situation, Ponga took one five to stay. I think for Manu to come to your club, you have to make him the highest paid player in the game, and he, with levels of performance like that, it's you know it, it it's quite within the realms of possibility that a club a club will do that. You know, especially if by the time Manu comes back, we might have an 18th team. Yeah. So. Yeah, obviously, depending on where that is, um, yeah. It was interesting listening to Matty Johns after the game. And as good as Joey was at fullback, he posed the question, uh, Can could he do that every single week? Like In mm. the week-to-week grind of the NRL, a 30-week season, if you're going to make the GF, would he be able to sustain that level of performance yeah. and, and that work rate. Just to clarify too, it's a two year deal. Yeah, but he, it's Japanese only one rugby. NRL season. Uh, but he only misses twenty twenty five. Yeah, it's only yeah, one okay. yeah, so he's only out for next year, but it's because of the the, the they only play eight games or something, don't yeah, they? There's not many of them. Uh, uh, might be, might so if he's 10. coming back for twenty six if he's coming best? back for twenty six Who? Who's the best fullback in the game? Like you, you talk about like who is like, you talking think, you're talking I think if you ask Brisbane, they'd say Reese Walsh. I think if you ask Manly, they say Tom Travoyevich. I'd say if you I'm ask asking the you. Roosters, I'm asking they've you. got two. I'm asking you. Who's the best fullback Who's in the, the game? Who's the best fullback in the game at the moment? Like, I mean, you talk about all I these superstars. I think it's Reece Walsh. Right. He, think, over over, I, over Caleb I, Ponger. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Where does, where does Dylan Edwards, match, where listen, does listen, Edwards listen, stay? And then that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a struck match with him. But, but, like, what he does for Brisbane, the speed that he's got, the kicking game, the, like... His whole jet and he and I don't think we've scratched the surface with Reese Walsh. Yet. It's just all raw potential at the moment, mate. When he gets like his footy knowledge and the more experience he gets, he's going to go to a level that I think he'll be. He he might become the closest to Billy Slater. Wow! Wow! Well, if you were picking a team to tomorrow, or fully fit playing at their best, you'd got you'd have Walsh over Turbo. Turbo's one, two, isn't he? I, I think. Oh man, I think overall, it's a hard question to like Mate, to go on the spot it, because you, you you'd need to. I reckon that's a that's a, it. It's not it's a simple the answer. It's an easy. Era. It's an easy question with a with a very complex answer because no, you'd, you'd need to go. Absolutely, that's said. Every club would love their own. Yeah, yeah. And that's and and like Roger Tuivasa was shit. Like when yeah. he went back, they're like. I think it is our greatest era for fullbacks. But if you're right, if it, you look at the game now, mm. and I and then I played against Billy, and then Lockie was fullback, and there was some, and there was Minichella, there were some great fullbacks in the game, Brett Mullins. But if you look at every single club, and and how their fullback plays, I think because of everybody wants to play, so the cool kid wants to go play. Probably when I was growing up, like they probably all wanted to be a halfback uh, yeah, or five eight. Right. So because the best kid wants to play fullback now. It is the yeah. mo- like the most athletic. If I had Tabua Fado on my side, I would be licking yeah. my lips. I would be going to watch him play every week. One of my favourite players is Jaden Campbell at the Titans. Yeah. I love the way he plays. I love the way he pokes his name. We are a much better side. So you go to most clubs, drink water has changed the way the Cowboys play mm. and attack. You uh, know what I mean? Well, now every just, club just interesting, a- just to quickly interesting on the side note with the Roosters, just to. Qualified two year deal, but Tedesco's deal ends in twenty five at the end of twenty five. So it does open the door for Manu to yeah. come back. Yeah, and, and I think that's fullback. the plan. Yeah. I think that will be yeah. the plan. Josh Schuster, um at Manly. Are you right? You've just decided to come in and join us again. Thank you. I'm just uh, finishing my spot. Yeah, well, that's good. That's just good. for the record, I think Josh Morris works on another network but that's <laughs> yeah. strong well, performance. That's why me. I corrected myself, <laughs> fool. Yeah. Um can I just ask <laughs> Josh Schuster and Manly. Um I, I, I want to qualify by this for saying that, uh, that I understand that there's a little bit off the field going on for Josh as well. Um, and in no way is this but a, a personal attack, but I think Manly have really made the right decision here. They, they've made a decision that's well, in No, they made the wrong decision in the first place. Mm. I blame, like, why did they sign him? On was, that a Anthony Siebel? was that Anthony yeah, Siebel? Was that Anthony Siebel? Tony Mestrov. So he, he was the initial. Well, they obviously saw that he was going to be. A better player than what at this moment he's turned out to be, and so they had some clauses in this contract, and they were able to use those clauses to obviously make his time at Manly finish straight away. Now we we heard from Aaron Woods in the last hour saying that look, you know, we just 
He was named in reserve grade. Next thing he's gone, he's going to come back into the club. But this has been a messy situation and it's created a lot of publicity for a long time at Manly Hoops because the talking point has always been over the last couple of years, is he fit? Is he not? Is he injured? Is he not? Where does he fit? 800,000. There's been so much commentary on it. At least now the line's been drawn in the sand. Manly can move forward. They're going to have some room in the cap space and they're going to obviously go looking for some more players. It's not Joss's fault that Seagulls management decided to pay him $800,000 no a season. Yeah, there are some clauses in it. Um, and that's why we are where we are now, where he's been granted personal leave and some time away from the club. Uh, I think he will end up at another club. And as much as I know publicly, the other 16 rivals are all saying, I oh, know we've got no interest in Josh Schuster. Someone, he's such a talent. Right when he's right, yeah, unbelievable. And when he's yeah. on, we were there that day, Gordy. When he, he carved up Parramatta the day Bozo died at Bank yes. West or near Combank Stadium, he was phenomenal. He's the best player on the field. That that's no fluke. Like he is an immense talent, but he he just needs to apply himself, yeah, get his weight right. And I think in the right system, like a Melbourne Storm or or somewhere where you know hard work and and showing up to training. And doing extras and all that thing is absolutely paramount that that Schuster could kick. Mm. Well, I I agree with you, Hoops. He, he certainly could. Um, and in terms of you know what's going on, obviously uh, his very close friend passed um, whilst at training. So yep. you know that would be well. I, you I can't think you, I think you can only you can't imagine. Imagine. yeah yeah. Uh, in terms of where Josh is at now. Um, and obviously, the deal that was handed to him, for me, th- there's th- those two things don't go hand in hand. The, I think if you're an eight hundred thousand dollar player, or if you're a club that are going to sign an eight hundred thousand dollar player, you don't need a clause. They don't go hand in hand because if you're an eight hundred thousand dollar player, all those m- performance metrics that's part of the dance. So Manly were foolish enough to to offer that. That for me, that those two don't coexist they, or they shouldn't and I think for Josh now um, where he's at no one will ever question his ability to, to turn a game or no produce a, uh, a level of skill but I think it's you know maybe just dial that down a little, like it, it seems like he, he he goes looking for the big play and in terms of the contract stuff you'd hope and the advice to him would be Let's not focus on finance, but let's focus on football and where he can get the football aspect of his life um, on to release his potential rather than, you know, maximizing your financial gain from the next contract. So uh, there, there'll be there'll be a, a, a team or two that will look at Josh and go, well, we, we, we can turn him into that. And there'll be there'll be coaches, men out there. But how come go, Manly can't? Because they're the ones that know so much about this kid. They're the ones that signed him on eight hundred. They're the ones that have had a lot to do in his career. So you think just changing the colour of your jersey is going to make you a better player? Or well, different coach potentially up. good, Gordon. Like a, di- a different coach. Desi he has probably like, had some. Why? Why, why wouldn't? He probably why, had three different coaches. Yeah, why wouldn't the, Titan, why would the Titans go? Like I'm, I'm being genuine here. They've got they've got issues in the halves, and, and I say this with the deepest respect because I don't think he's a half. He's an edge back. He's rower, a back rower, man. mate. He's a back rower. As long as the day is, there's footy hasn't changed that much. He's a back rower. He's on the edge. The 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 thing I do with Schuster, and I heard Phil Gould say it the other day <clears throat> when he was talking about Latrell. How much do you love the game? How much do you want to play the game? Because I believe you don't get paid money to play the game. You get money to train. You get money to get yourself in the peak possible fitness to go out there and do your job on any given Sunday. So that's the question I'd ask him. And Someone like, and I worked with Dave Tallow, had more ability in his left toe than of than most footy players that run out, but he didn't reach the potential because he didn't want to work as hard at um, on the training paddock, right? It wasn't serious to him. And then you look at someone like Cartwright, who was in the same boat. He's a big name from Penrith. He yeah. had all the skill. He can play 5A too. Yeah. But now at Parramatta, what is he doing better? He's playing yeah. tough. He's got yeah. the baller suit on, not the dinner suit. So Schuster's got to just look at, say, someone – and how Cartwright has turned himself around to be a great player for Parramatta. And if he keeps on playing, and if he has three or four more years like this, he is a state of origin player. He is a Australian player. He is one of those guys because you've got to play tough and you've got to be able to do, if you get that much money, 
as much as I don't like talking about it, you got to be one of the better players every week. You got to be the best player at training. You got to mm. set a standard. You got to you got to show the way. You know that word way. You know it's got to be the manly way. It's not the manly brand of football. Cartwright's a great example, Gordon, because he was very similar to Schuster in that he was Absolutely. on the big money. He came through as a superstar junior, uh, was getting talked about possible origin selection. He was in the 20-man New South Wales origin squad at a very young age. And then all of a sudden, it started to go a little bit pear-shaped. Went to the Titans, didn't enjoy uh, the stint that he had there, had an unhappy stint. And then now he's come back. He's not on big money, but he is, he's worked his ass off yep. to put himself in a position where he can play tough and he can continue to play in the NRL. Yeah, and and what's changed with him? Attitude. Yeah, that's what you got to. Pay. Different it club, hard. but it's a different club. He went to a different club, Brad. And look, when he went to when he went to Parramatta, just I hear me no, out. No, he ran out of chances. Well, I don't know so about that. Last, he left it, the Garth Brennan. Sort of... the, the the Garth Brennan Gold Coast Titans Bryce Cartwright experiment did not work. He goes Neither there, did the Penrith one, yeah, where he's a famous name. Well, Brad Arthur invested some time. He just didn't get a bloke who was playing this kind of football. He gave him time. He played a lot of New South Wales Cup. He was out of that 17 for a long time. And slowly but surely, he rebuilt his game. So a coach was prepared and a well, club was prepared to invest in. Oh, this is a slow Brad burn. I done a great job yeah, with it. But it's going to be a slow burn wherever he goes. And Mel, Can I tell you right. something? Everybody else would have told him exactly the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you know what? The Brad, penny just finally yeah. dropped. Yeah, the, pen, the penny drops, but also a factor... Uh, bring into consideration is Bryce Cartwright's on probably the lowest contract he's been on his whole, NR, his sure. whole NRL career. So that creates less focus, less pressure, more of a simplified role. So, it, you know, now when we talk about Bryce Cartwright, it's we don't have that. Oh, that, he's that, 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 that money. He's yeah. Oh, this. you know, he's doing it's oh, you, you, Paramount are getting good value for money. So we talk him up. Yeah. And, and, and you know, like you say, it's not anybody's fault what they get paid. It's, you know, the, the club have a, a side to saying that, but whether you like it or you don't, it, it comes into um, how we talk about footballers, the, the pay packet, um, you know, affects it. Yeah. Well, it's very, either way, you, you think, is there, are there clubs that, I know every club um, has said, oh, no, not in, but genuinely, are there clubs that would, would look at him? Yeah, I think there are. I do think that there are. I think that publicly, um, because of the way that's been portrayed in the media, when clubs have been asked, they've all gone, oh, no, we wouldn't go down that road. But like I say, he, he, we've seen enough with Josh in terms of his talent on the field. I think if he makes some adjustments to his lifestyle and rips in at training, that there'll be a club that will absolutely sign him. Can I ask you this? And I don't expect, you know, are the Dragons any chance? Like I know no, the Flamo Dragons. said no on the paper. That, that doesn't necessarily I have, mean... I, I, mate, I'll be so straight up. I haven't asked Flano that. Right. Uh, so what's your mail? No, I've got no mail. Um, I'm so not, what I'm do just you bring to the you, show? I'm just, no, asking, I'm just asking, mate. Could you got well, your... that's going to be a segment a bit later. And I've been, you know, it, well, vindicated J a couple Josh of times. will get another chance because there's been players with less talent. ability um, that, play, that clubs and, and coaches have rolled the dice on, if yeah. that makes sense. Like, there, there's many more examples. And Josh's current position and potential are higher than some of those players that uh, I'm referring to in the past. Yeah, 